Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. on Bright House Cable. Uh, Bright House is our sponsor for the show. We've been on the air for eight years now. And the purpose of the show is to bring forth issues of great importance to the Hispanic community of Central Florida. Of course, we're in the English language, we're not in the Spanish language, and that's so all of our neighbors can understand uh, what our issues are. Um, I'm here with Dennis Freitas. Dennis Freitas is a leader in the Central Florida community. Actually, he's a leader all over the place. This, this is a, this is, he's very involved with veterans groups across the United States. He's very involved with education. He's very involved in politics in Central Florida. And now he's gotten very involved in the redistricting of the political power lines in Central Florida. Um, Dennis, tell us. <coughs> Well, Danny, first, thank you for having me on your mm -hmm. show. I, this is the, one of the greatest shows for Hispanics because we're fighting for a just cause. We're fighting for our Hispanic community, and you've done a lot of good things for our community, so thank you very well, much. Well, I appreciate that, you know, and, and I, it's always great to have you because uh, you really know what's going on in the I battlefield. So. <laughs> in the battlefields. Yeah. <laughs> so talking as a military man, you know, we, we've, got to, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to stand up for our rights, and we got to battle the dragon, like I say. Uh, there's a lot of things coming up, and redistricting is one of the most important things. And you know why redistricting is important? because we have an opportunity for the next 10 years to empower the Hispanic community, to empower the minority community because we're uh, together on this. And we've got to make sure that Hispanics, U.S. Puerto Ricans, blacks, and other disadvantaged minorities face that are facing unfair political district line that minimize their opportunity for elections. We're talking about opportunity to run for a position and result in underrepresentation. I mean, in Orange County, we don't have uh, just representation at the county level, for example. We don't have any Hispanics on the county board, yet Hispanics are the majority, and yet the census says we are a minority majority, and that's a census uh, terminology. Uh, out of 18.8 .8 million population of Florida, minorities are 42.1 percent, Danny, and that's about 8 million Americans here, yet it breaks out to Hispanics 4.2 million, blacks 3 million, Asian and others 1 million, and yet we don't have a representative in, in Orange County board, we don't have one in the school board, there's an underrepresentation, and we must, you know, take action to empower the Hispanic community. Well, it's it's controversial to say the least. Wherever there's a, wherever you have groups uh, moving to change the social fabric, the economic fabric of a community or society, there's always a counter push. So you're going to have people fighting for the Hispanic community for redistricting, and then you have people fighting against it. Um, tell us. What exactly is redistricting? Because just in case people don't understand it and they don't know what it is. Redistricting, every year the census uh, does a count of the American population. Based on that count, every 10 years, uh, the, I, I should say every 10 years, uh, does a recount of, of the population. Based on that, our House and Senate uh, legislators uh, will redistrict for congressional seats, House seats, and Senate seats. Then at the county level, you have the redistricting for county seats. At the school board level, you have redistricting for schools. And then at the uh, city level, you have redistricting for the city. Okay, what is redistricting? Well, what does it mean exactly? It means redrawing the lines based on the population uh, count. So okay. they redraw the lines. So what's important about that is that you have communities of interest per the 1965 voting rights law, uh, you have access, uh, minority access districts and, you, and communities of interest that, that must be all together so you can give a opportunity to, to that community, it could be a Hispanics, minority, uh, for, so they can be represented in their government. So in other words, um, let me get this straight just for me and for people that like me, because you're a polit uh, you, got, you got it down, I know that. So you can have a group of, let's say, his, in the Hispanic community that's three miles long and two miles wide. Uh -huh. And that's a solid Hispanic enclave. Yes. But then that community can belong to three separate districts Boy. which minimize their power 
in ability to affect legislation because the Hispanic two mile by three mile area is broken up and set off to be smaller segments that are a part of a major district which is not minority. It's like a, in the military, divide and conquer. Okay. You know, you divide the groups and so they don't have the power or the mass mm -hmm. to be effective and, and to gain the ears of their legislative representatives, their, who are, or county or city. So now what they're saying is the congressional lines, for example, will be redrawn to maximize the Hispanic participation, which up until now has been avoided. That, that is correct. And we have constructive recommendations because we have to be constructive about this. There's a group that's called the uh, Central Florida Redistricting Council. And that group is, is working together with other groups uh, to make sure we come up with a redistricting plan that has all the elements so it can be approved. That, and we're trying to redistrict for fairness. Uh, we have some hearings throughout Florida and you can go to the Florida Senate uh, website, and in there you can get information on where the hearings are going to be throughout Florida for the, for, until the end of the year. Uh, you can also do a redistricting map. You can also send in written correspondence. And for Central Florida, what we would like to see is a congressional his, uh, minority majority district, because in, in Central Florida, Orange County, Osceola County, and four other uh, uh, Florida counties are what they call minority majority. Do you know what minority mm -hmm. majority sure, means? Sure. But uh, in order to explain that, it means that Hispanic non-whites are a minority, mm -hmm. but yet they have captured the majority of the elected positions. So that has to be changed. So we have a balanced democracy, we have equality, we have fair, and equality, I mean equality of opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, because the best qualified, you know, I'm a, a pa patriot, and I, I go for, the, for merit and the best qualified, but when there's institutional discrimination, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure there's no institutional discrimination, but a, a fair playing field. Okay. So basically what we would like to do is uh, Florida, because of its population gain, has gained two congressional seats. For example, we want to bring one of those congressional seats to Central Florida. And we have a, an area uh, that's compact, that's a, a community of interest, uh, minority uh, access district. So that way we can give an opportunity uh, for a minority to win an election. So that is one of the major things that we have to do. Now is the time to stand up and speak up because mm -hmm. now is the time for the next 10 years that we're going to can affect uh, and influence the redistricting mm -hmm. and we can empower our community because this is the most important political event for the next 10 years. So uh, I urge everybody to go out there, write their congressmen, write their House and Senate, which are where the lines are going to be drawn, write their counties to ensure fair redistricting. Mm -hmm. Um, it sounds really good and, and I hope that it works out for us as a community. It's, it, the time has come. Let's talk a little bit about the Hispanic license plate. Sure. Uh, we have a new Hispanic, thanks to, to the Hispanic uh, Corporate uh, Achievers uh, and, and thanks to your good work in the legislation. Uh, this play was introduced by Speaker Dean Cannon and Senator Siplin in the Senate. Uh, we've got it approved by the governor. And it's the first historic license plate in the nation. And that means that there is no other state that has this. And this is to, with the money we receive, the majority of the money goes in back into the community with community grants. And this is a way for Florida to salute the contributions of Hispanics to the forming of our uh, Florida and, and to our beloved nation. Uh, what are the things uh, about this plate? It says since 1513. And that, that's a great saying because what happened in 1513, and my good friend Sam is going to come and talk about it because we're also with the plate, uh, we're going to do the 500th celebration of the discovery of Florida and the Juan Ponce Leon landing in Melbourne Beach. So 1513 was when the first governor general of Puerto Rico, Juan Ponce Leon, uh, sailed from Puerto Rico and discovered Florida. So there's a lot of things that Hispanics are doing. So we want to salute Hispanic contributions 
And also we've got to say that, you, you know we've talked about it before, Hispanics have been uh, helping and contributing to Florida and the United States since 1779. And, and you know what happened in 1779 during the Revolutionary War. Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and Mexicans fought under the, on the, on the United States flag for America's independence, and people don't know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this place symbolizes all those contributions. And then again, the funding is going to go back to the community in the forms of grants. So this is a great place, and, and also the community needs to thank you for, for getting it. Wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we, we're, Hispanics have been going through a political process in the state of Florida now for a long time. But um, I think that the time has come, and I see the, the earthquake of Hispanics right now, the influx of new Hispanic coming into Central Florida and coming into the state. And uh, Hispanics are going to change the politics of the old ways, the way things used to be. Yeah, and this is a just cause. I mean, we're, t we're looking for equality mm -hmm. and equal rep representation, and that's what America stands for. Sure. I mean, what's the essence of America democracy if it's not institutional equality, consent of the government, uh, you know, and it's very important that we but have you know, that representation. You know the reality is wherever there's a push forward, there's a push, opposite push going back. You know, we, we live in a society, thank God, that we don't have revolutions here, but <laughs> we have intellectual revolutions. Yes. And that's the way we're set up to do it. I think the Hispanic community has set the pace now for an intellectual revolution in the state of Florida. And, and, and we've got to engage everybody, mm -hmm. because we're in this, uh, you know, everything there, I always say there's one race, and it's the human race. And we've got to judge on merit and mm -hmm. we got to judge uh, and not judge on the color of our skins exactly. or on our heritage. And the, for exa the Hispanic and Puerto Rican heritage and lineage goes back to 1513. So I say well, a Puerto Rican discovered Florida. <laughs> well, that's, he, he arrived, you know, but the yeah. Indians were here first. And that, I know, that but they settled, they, they settled Florida. They, yeah, they, uh, and, and opened the modernization, you know, yeah. with, within that, that frame. Well, and, to the, and the doors to the United States. So that's why my good friend Sam Lopez, yeah. who is the president mm -hmm. uh, of UTB, United Third Bridge, and he'll talk about it, mm -hmm. and also of the uh, celebrations. We're going to have a big celebration. Yeah. and he'll talk about that, uh, it's very important because that highlights our contributions to the Absolutely. forming of our nation. Actually, um, Hispanics named the, Florida was, is a peninsula. Yes. And it was Ponce de Leon, Juan Ponce de Leon, who named Florida, Florida. And, the, and discovered so Florida for the I, European you know what, discovery. Do you, yeah, do you know what the name was before then? Do you know what the, I'm going to have to look that no, up. No, because Juan Ponce. It, was an, it had to be an Indian name. I mean, even yeah. if it was regional, it had to be an Indian name. And, 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 my, and Sam Lopez is a historian. Well, I'm going to look that up. <laughs> Sam, Maybe I'll ask Sam when he comes on. <laughs> yeah. This is the plate again. Uh, you can uh, order this plate on the Hispanic Achiever website, www hispanicachievers.org you go to the splash page you'll see the plate you click on you click on the plate and you'll see all the information about the hispanic achiever plate all the proceeds uh, go to the community and uh, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to get sammy lopez on right now so we're going to fade out and then fade in real quick uh, we just quick fade in and quick fade out. Dennis Freitas was just here, and you all saw him. And now uh, I'm here with um, Mr. Lopez, and uh, Mr. Lopez is a famous leader in the Hispanic community. He's undertaken the massive celebration of the 500-year anniversary of Hispanics landing on the peninsula that they named Florida. Sammy Lopez, tell us about what's going on with you. First of all, welcome. I want to. I want to say thank you for having me on your show. Well, you're always welcome here. You and uh, um, I've been working on this project now for the last past nine years through United Third Bridge, which is which is a civil rights organization in the area of education, also in the area of culture. And um, it's UTB is 35 years old, so we have some a little bit of experience uh, on working in these areas. Um, in the area of education and culture. And right now we're poised uh, and we're on phase three of basically working on that Juan Ponce de Leon project. Uh, Juan Ponce de Leon never landed in, in St. Augustine where he landed was in an area called Melbourne Beach. 
Um, right close within that vicinity, there's a park that's being named, uh, that actually has the name Juan Ponce de Leon Landing. And on that park right now, we are in phase three. Phase one was building a sponsorship wall made out of granite. Phase two was basically setting up the, um, the pedestal to hold a 10-foot statue of Juan Ponce de Leon. And, um, and then phase three is actually the statue. And then phase four is going to build, it's gonna be the building of a $1.9 million multicultural Hispanic uh, research center. Um, and that's going to basically, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work in the area of history at the research center. There's a lot of history that's, um, right now there's stuff sitting on the shelves that have to be, that have to have, uh, we have to take a second look at what's there because some of the stuff is so outdated um, and there's so much new research um, that has to be brought in and that's what this research center is going to be about. We're going to be working with a few of the colleges in the area, with UCF, with BCC, uh, to get these young uh, students to come in and start looking at history. So it's very important that we look at this and as we stand right now, we've invited the King, the King and Queen of Spain on the, on the 500 year celebration. So it's a, it's a task. This is not a small project. This is an immense project. We're gonna be conducting a mass um, um, on the site at, at Immaculate Conception, which is only about an eighth of a mile away from where the Juan Ponce de Leon Landing Park is. What is there right now? Right now, right now we have the sponsorship wall and the base. What's the sponsorship wall? The sponsorship wall is for people, companies that want to invest and want to be part of this celebration and want to take, uh, that want to donate money either to the statue, to the project. We have pavers that we have around mm -hmm. the, the uh, pedestal right now. We have a walkway um, we with, that has pavers also leading up to um, a um, land marker that was given to us uh, by the state uh, saying that that was the area uh, where Juan Ponce de Leon has actually landed. Um, it was interesting because in January sometime, January, February of this year, we met with the Secretary of State and um, they also recognized Melbourne Beach as the first landing. So we've invited them to take part of the celebration. Interesting because what it represents is that um, 1513, Juan Ponce de Leon lands on the shores of Florida. With him was the first free black slave. They weren't slaves, they were black, but they were free, they weren't slaves. Also with them, the first women uh, also came on board. Um, interesting history because there was a lot of um, Jewish people that had to leave Spain and settled in Puerto Rico. They also settled in parts of uh, Mexico. And so what the celebration is going to do, and be, uh, you know, the last conversation that, um, that when you were talking to Dennis, you were mentioning about the Indians. And part of this big celebration is to bring in the Indians and bring in the, the black community and bring in the European community and uh, have this mass um, and, and you know that with this came the first um, with the Juan Ponce de Leon, the Spanish brought over Christianity. So it's the cradle of the Judeo-Christian religion that this country has adopted and what we are as a nation. So this celebration is going to encompass all of that and we're bringing all the people, I know that there was a lot of injustice done with the Indians. Well, I didn't do those injustice but we certainly at this juncture, what we want to do with this 500 year celebration is to bring that to a closure, to bring everybody together so that we can move on for the next 500 years and so that we can work together, we can bring better understanding. That's what the Multicultural Center is going to do so that we can preserve the Indian culture, the Spanish culture, and, and within all, 
bring it under the American culture because we are a, um, a melting pot. Um, so interesting history, a lot there that has to be brought, brought out. Um, and not only the fact that Juan Ponce de Leon was the first governor of Puerto Rico, but he was the first chief justice of Florida, he was the first governor, and um, so he also discovered basically also the, um, the, um, the gateway basically from Europe uh, to Florida, which was basically the, um, there was a name, uh, the sea route of basically moving ships a lot quicker. Um, and with this, um, they were able to colonize, they were able to transport. Um, so Juan Ponce de Leon never really got to do a settlement. Um, he tried before basically uh, the Indians shot him and then ultimately from the wounds he passed away. But what Juan Ponce de Leon did that was so unique was that he opened the door for European colonization, which is everything. And also we're poised because we're working together now with the Spanish government. We're working together with the Secretary of State. Uh, we're working with another organization called um, um, Florida 500. Um, and um, with these organizations, Hopefully we're gonna put together a, an excellent, excellent um, 500 year celebration. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna do a banquet? Are you gonna do a dinner? Are you gonna, well, what, what else we, are you gonna do? I know you're gonna have the statue, the commemoration of the statue, but if you have the king and queen of Spain coming over. We're gonna do the jet flyovers. Okay. We're going to have the uh, tall ships. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a mass. And we're working on a special project right now, which is basically right off the coast. Um, we have these islands, it's an island. And right now the um, people refer to them as the barrier islands. Barrier islands is not a name. So what we're doing right now is that we're working with all the cities that are on the coastal shore. Um, and what we've done now is we're partitioning the federal government so that we could name those islands Ponce de Leon Island. So by the time the king and queen come, we can have the ceremonial uh, signing of uh, basically naming and the barrier islands, which is actually no name, to actually Ponce de Leon uh, Island. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna change anybody's post office box. It's not gonna change anybody's <laughs> um, anything. All it's going to be, it's like a, it's like a celebration and it's a name. Do you, do you think you're going to get resistance on that from San Francisco? Um, we, got a, we got a little bit of resistance, but you know, we're moving forward. Right now we have three cities who have signed on. Great. Um, and we also have the Historical Commission, which I'm one of the commissioners on there, that's also signed on. We have a meeting now with the Patrick Air Force Base. We also have a meeting with Cape, uh, we met with Cape Canaveral. So we're looking that there's going to be some support for it. Ultimately, we'll get the job done and the celebration will be on. So we're having cultural events for a whole week on the beach. Um, we're going to be uh, doing the jet flyover um, and, and then we're going to be doing the service. Um, it's interesting because the Pope is sending actually the bishop from Orlando, New, and then we are now uh, trying to get the Archbishop from New York City, um, Dolan, to actually be part of that. Uh, and also Cardinal, um, the Cardinal from New York, also Egan, to this come This is up. a massive undertaking. How many people do you have working on this? We have right now about, um, there's about 60, 62 people on a committee, mm -hmm. and we're reaching out to over 280 something people. Okay. We'll take a little break. Okay, we took a quick break. We're coming back now. And uh, right now, Sammy's still with us, but he's given up his chair to the gentleman who is going to create the 10-foot sculpture of Juan Ponce de Leon, which is going to be on Melbourne Beach. And uh, his name is Mr. Picon, Rafael Picon. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and how did you get here? I mean, how were you well, selected? Well, Mr. Ramos, this is something amazing. It's very incredible. I remember starting the story about Ponte de Leon and all 
the discovery of Florida and all these things when I was 10, 11 years old in Spain. What I didn't know, the 40 years later, I was going to be making the sculpture of Ponce de Leon here in this wonderful land. Because I always say, if, if Spain is my mother, the United States is my father. Mm -hmm. I've been here for 30 some years in, in, in this wonderful place in Earth. But anyway, I was infatuated with all that. And last year, uh, somebody invited me to go to the show that he made in Melbourne for, for the... It wasn't expo. for Ponte de Leon, it was, it was for... It's the expo. The yeah, expo, for the expo. So I ended up in the expo and saw some, some, saw some of my sculpture. And he said, well, you want to think of doing a sculpture, Ponte de Leon? I said, oh my god, something went inside my body. Because I remember starting the this adventure of Ponce de Leon and they coming to, to Florida, became the first governor of Puerto Rico, uh, declared by the Isab Queen Isabella the First and Fernando the Fifth of Aragon in 1509, and then he came over here from Puerto Rico in 1513, four years later, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because I believe, I, I, I know that they were very afraid to to surcar los oceanos mm -hmm. because they thought they were going to fall down. So once they reached Puerto Rico, they feel safe. Yes. And where, it took them three years to reach over here. Where are you making the sculpture mm -hmm. and what stage are you at on? Uh, well, the sculpture is going to take, uh, as we did the 2nd of April of uh, this year, we celebrate the breaking, how do you call that? Yeah, the groundbreaking ceremony that we did uh, on oh, my statue. studio, yes. Right. And I did it exactly, we tried to do it, as a matter of fact, it did happen the 2nd of April of this year, so it will be come two years exactly uh, for the celebration of the discovery of Florida in 2013, mm -hmm. the 2nd of April. And the sculpture, it is being made at my studio in Rockledge. And right now we're still working on the masterpiece, it's about 10, I began with 9, 4, Mr. Da Vinci's calculations to yeah. get it right because it's such a big sculpture we don't want to go off And what's it made out of? What's it made out of? It, uh, right now we're working with uh, uh, the, the, the chassis of the skeleton is made out of steel and the, the body is made out of styrofoam and then we have to put wax in it right. and then the, the clay. And obviously, we will make uh, the, the molds out of it mm -hmm. to, to pour the bronze inside, which is going to be the final material, mm -hmm. so it can withstand the, uh, the wind from the beach of Florida, <laughs> which is going to be in well, Melbourne listen, Beach, right? So, I, so it's going to be a task. Yeah. Well, listen, Sammy, we're running out of time. It's a pleasure having you, an honor oh, to yes. have you doing this project for the Hispanics in the United States. Well, I just and want to... you to certainly be the person who is going to make history. My pleasure, and Mr. Your, Ramos. Your... I would like to say one, one thing. This is incredible. Ponce de Leon was born in San Tervas, Spain. Mm -hmm. By 500 years later, it's going to be made in America. Beautiful. <laughs> It's going to be made in America. And, and I just want to say also that uh, that your license plate from this point on is going to be a, a partnership uh, between the 500-year discovery and also the the partnership that we're doing with mm -hmm. the license plates. Well, here's that so, license plate. So that's the one. go to www.hispanicachievers.org, get your license plate. Okay, and uh, this is uh, Danny Ramos on Bright House Cable. We're here every Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Uh, we will see you next week.